Call the Catterville Township Board meeting to order, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to our Township Board meeting, March 9th, 2016. Roll call attendance, please. Ken? Here. Matt? Here. Patty? Here. Mary Agnes? Here. Angie? Here. Okay, we've got some agenda approvals to talk about here. we got some moving around to do. Um, first item is H3. We'll remove the letter from Clerk Viola in regards to the policies and procedures. H3. Yep. I want to point out that the revenue and expenditure report in the packet is missing page one. one? We tried to find it today and it, it wouldn't, wouldn't copy the same that we did before, so I don't know. We're going to try and, uh, we've given you an entire new one now, which I haven't passed out yet. We're going to add this new report, and since it's run today, as of today's date, it will reflect any activity that we had, um, we continued during the course of business since we passed the packets out, which was last Thursday. Uh, bank and reconciliation report will be discussed later. Uh, cost of back-to-back -back class for, that was recommended by Plant Moran for the clerk to attend. Uh, we're going to need approval so that she can make a reservation to attend the classes, and she has a scenario for that. Uh, the compensation letter from Clerk Viola is also gone. In the new board minutes, uh, I don't, do we want to take a look at the consent agenda first, I guess? And well, let's see what is any of this. Is this all to be on the? Okay, well, we could bring it up now. Or, um, okay, we can either bring this up now or we can discuss it when we get to the board minutes. Um, they've suggested that we have only one shot to approve board minutes. But as MTA, you know, MTA. MTA has advised us that. Um, as you know, we've been banking these minutes and bringing them back and knocking them down and starting again. And um, I can turn it over to Angie. She can explain it a little bit better what she okay. actually heard from the MTA guy that I listened as well, so. Okay, well actually what um, um, MTA has said about the board meeting minutes is that um, that we have one shot to approve the board meeting minutes. So what happens tonight if I go and produce the minutes, they can only be approved at the next meeting. And um, they cannot go on to, and on to the next meetings after that. And then um, whatever corrections that need to happen to the minutes um, at the next meeting need to be suggested in a motion format. And you need to state your motion and what you'd like to be corrected. And then the board has to approve on that correction and then we can move forward after that. So. Okay, also under uh, consent agenda, under correspondence, E8D should be added. It's uh, adding a letter from the DE regarding tree cutting in our area and it's for information only. Uh, Item number G1, we're going to be adding Planning Commission member appointments. Um, we have uh, Marilyn Stefanik, River Road, and Mike Higgins from the River Road that's interested in being on our Planning Commission. Also adding Zoning Board of Appeal alternate member um, appointment of Gary Stefanik from River Road. Um, under G5, uh, the water rate study. Uh, we have a price from UMBA, which is the people that did our water study back in 2010. And then we have a synopsis on what Plant Moran have, have offered to do for us also. And H3 I'm going to remove as well because the compensation committee, I'm not prepared to discuss it because I really didn't do my homework, I run out of time. 
Um, I have a housekeeping item too that I don't know if it would be, if we should get past the, uh, it came up as, as a problem with the consent agenda in an area that uh, we had for revenues and expenditures report from last month. We had a question on the $11,000 item. He was questioning that that was paid and he wanted to know, um, he kind of insinuated that that it was paid after the fact that Angie and I took office. And what I'd like to do is explain to you what we found when we did some investigating. And I've got those items whenever you want to discuss it or do you want to wait till after the consent agenda is voted on? Either way, it's your meeting. All right, well, I'm gonna run it by you real quick. The invoice is number 9221. Angie, will you pass these out? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's two actually, oh. with two different amounts. Mm. Must have that one. Do you have an extra one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I think there's two there. Yeah, there's two there. Oh, okay. Do you want another one? Okay. You got yours? I have two copies. I have two packets. Yes. Okay. All right, did you give one to Ken? Okay. Do you have this second packet with a little? He needs this. All right, I'll give you mine then. All right, um, the, in the invoice is 9221. It's dated October 8th, 2015, and the amount of the bill was $6,713.53. And that is an invoice that we received from uh, cable TV for, or cable channel six, I guess you, uh, technically is what it is. And it, uh, the description is that it's uh, for cable, for first and second cable contracts. And when you look up the other invoices, 9168, that one's dated 827, 2015. And the amount of that one is 4,138.06. So this makes a total of $10,000, And when you subtract that from that number that you were questioning, Matt, that 11,501.59, it leaves a difference of 650 bucks. And we discovered that that invoice was for the municipal code. I think that's the, the airtime that we get for that Florida based company that keeps our ordinances on the internet so people can access it and when we do changes they make those changes for us and keep it up to date so the checks were written by the previous clerk not Angie and it was paid it had paid the first quarter twice according to the invoice description so thank you Matt for making us look that up and prove it to you and also thank you for the asking for that revenue and expenditure report for the last month because that's how we found it so now we have to contact uh, Cable 6 and tell them that they billed us twice. And we get some money back. Sounds so good. good move. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go with uh, an agenda, a consent agenda, if we can. Can I add to the consent agenda that we need to sure. uh, re-verify and re-implement uh, the compensation committee and so that the people know Mr. Barnes was supposedly, and we should have done this in December and we didn't, to have it reestablished? Well, that's kind of what I was trying to, to wait till next month to do. If you want to do it now, we can vote on it now. Is it something that you think we should discuss without getting all the information? Reestablishing it? Well, I don't think Because we should it, have done it in December. It was not dissolved then. You're, you're sure that it did not get dissolved? No, but Mr. Barnes was, his term was up. So, I, and we did talk about having the compensation committee continue on. Yes, <clears throat> yes from the previous board. Okay. But by the end of the year, which when the new members and everyone got in there, none of us ever seemed to think about it because of the time from before. So I just wanted to reaffirm to him and or any of the other members that yes. are there, and then we can find out how many members need to be replaced. Yeah, that's the research I wanted to do before we talked about it. Well, if you wanted I, want, to I wanted to verify that we were reaffirming it. That we are going to keep it in, in that force. That we are, and to verify okay. that Mr. Barnes is still on it since he was supposedly off at the end of December. Okay. Well, let's do a couple of things here first. So we'll how you would like to word it, yeah. All right. Now, we'll add that to the agenda approval because we haven't voted on it yet. And we have one more item. We'll put it under... New business, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Now we'll put it on, we got it on three. Let's do H3. We'll put it back on. Okay. Reestablishment. Okay. Yep. And then next month I'll have everything figured out what their terms are, and then we can fill the slate. Okay, we have a, does anyone want to give us a, a motion to add the additions and the deletions that we discussed? I would so move. Do we have a second? I second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second for all the additions and deletions we just discussed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those that oppose say no. No one opposed, motion carried. All right, now let's do the consent agenda. Hmm? Yes. Okay, we have the new revenue and expenditure report ending March 31st, 2016. Uh, the upper left hand corner it says 308 2016, just so we know it's ran at 6 p.m. Yeah, because it was missing a page. Okay, it's at the very top of the time. Number two is the approval of the township board minutes. As we just discussed, the minutes. Um, for A, regular meeting December 9th, B, regular meeting January 13th. I guess those are going to stand the way they... Yeah, they have to stand as... As, mm -hmm. as what you have in record, on record right now. The February meeting is the one that Angie just did yeah. mm -hmm. for last month's meeting. There's a special meeting with a discussion or kind of a uh, informal setup of what took place at the meeting with Plant Moran, um, the auditors for our township, and that was... Uh, for state financial statement ending for year ending 331 2015 and it talked about the water rate study and the next audit preparation they came right into the township hall and discussed it with it was public so everyone there was a few people here also number three approval of township of treasures reports dated February 29th the township investment reports the township ba bank reconciliation report and the cash activity report now I have included because I asked Angie to give me some of that stuff that uh, I have the one that that was done by our treasure Patty Kowalczyk. She also added a new one, which is the bank reconciliation report. So I'm giving you assorted reports and you can pick and choose what you want to see. They got to have of the realm of what we're talking about here to make this work but there's also a cash summary report by account for the township and there's a bunch at the back we'll go over that in another part of the meeting there's also uh, approval of paychecks from february 10th and february 24th the gross combined total in the amount of seventeen thousand four hundred forty four dollars and one cent there's a separate payroll uh, for don and jonathan CHOP, $1,359.60 and $1,277.20 respectively. Uh, gross combined total in the amount of $2,636.80 and those are open to be paid. There's also an approval of uh, accounts payable, opens to be paid in the amount of $3,467.94 and the ones that need to be paid are $32,474.48. There is no continuing education requests uh, there's a report for uh, Huron Consultants Engineering stuff. Did I end up put, putting that in there? No, it's no. not in the packet. It's probably not in the packet because I, I didn't it, have it at the yeah, time. It I, was emailed to all of us, though. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. All right, very good. Um, and that one's dated March 1st, 2016. There's also some correspondence from the Marine City Fire Authority. <laughs> runs for February 2016. Uh, there is no... No, no report for Ira Township this month. There's a letter from Plant Moran regarding the discussion of our meeting, which came from their office, and then the, the minutes that, uh, the synopsis that uh, Angie did. And 8D, God bless you. 8D, a letter from the Detroit Edison regarding tree cutting and tree trimming in our areas for information only, and that's in your packet. 
So that's what we have. Do we have a motion to, to approve this? And then we'll have the discussion. I motion that we approve. Okay, go ahead. I motion to approve. Okay, do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. Open for discussion. Anyone have any comments? The, the board meeting minutes, were we going to um, uh, make a motion that... Uh, the, oh, uh, for the board meeting minutes, were we going to make a motion to um, uh, upload the, the minutes five days after they were approved to Minutes uh, on Demand? Yes, we can do that in the course of this... Um, it's right here, I think, this one. That first one? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Two, five days. Okay. Motion not to upload the agenda packet to the minutes on demand before a scheduled yeah. board meeting. Yeah, yeah. Previously, we've been uh, uploading the minutes from the board meeting um, to the minutes on demand before they're approved. And um, according to MTA, the residents of the township um, aren't allowed to review the minutes until they're approved, <coughs> five days after they're approved. So I'd like to make a motion that um, we um, adopt this. I would second that. Okay. Well, well we got a motion. On the table first of approving the whole agenda. Can't make a motion on a motion. Well, we can. Well, all right. Would you, all right. You want to finish that up? Is there anyone else had any further discussion on the uh, consent agenda as it's written? Okay. I would like questions? to take out two uh, C because I haven't had a chance. I didn't know until just when we were sitting here next to uh, Angie in regards to those meetings or those minutes from the uh, February fifteenth or the uh, February tenth. Mm -hmm were the corrected ones. I haven't reread them because I, when I got them, I thought it was still a copy of what we got last time. He's, so referring, he's referring to January 13th. Oh, January 13th. Okay, B then, not, not C. Mm -hmm. So, I would like to yeah, Well, they're going to stand anyway. They, they, have, they have to stand as, as we only get one shot to correct the minutes. Yeah, we've done that already. Yeah, we have to move on. Well, I understand that, but... I, still like it to be known don't I don't agree with that because we didn't make any of the corrections of all of the issues so everything that was on there even though it was incorrect well, you, you made the corrections. I made all the corrections and these, the set you have in your pocket right these here. are these are corrected to right. what we were talking about yes sir mm -hmm. I would still like to well, you can just vote no on the on on whole the whole thing, but I'm not for here. accepting those until we get them all read. And, and I made a motion that we accept the consent agenda, and Patty approved of it. Yeah, okay. but okay. he can just vote no. Okay, on okay. okay. If there okay. is yeah, no other discussion. Okay. Question: I, I don't know if it's just me, but December 9th is it in the packet? Eight? No, it is not in the packet. Just because, because it's not here. I just it's not. Yeah, right. it's because it's it was they were told it was going to stand. So and even then, though they weren't corrected, nine was corrected on the 13th. Okay. That's what the 13th meeting was all about. The first half hour was discussing all of the things that you want to change in December 9th. And, and it did get corrected? Yes, sir. I did it. Will a copy of those be available here soon? They're right there. Of the December meeting? It's not December, no. All the discussion that was made about the December 9th meeting is corrected in the 13th. So there should be a copy of the December meeting minutes all corrected somewhere in one of our packets correct no they said that don't touch it they said if you've done this already then leave it go they, they have to stand on their own but we did address it in the 13th or it Mary yes. Agnes addressed it in the 13th yeah. it's done in the 13th as a matter of fact you can you can tell what part of it came out of the December 9th meeting because it's in italics and it's like two pages of just the agenda approval in your first set of minutes. Okay? If you say. I do. What was your other question, Matt? Number seven, um, our engineer, that, that, you said you don't have a copy of that. That's the same report that he's emailed the whole board, correct? Yes, it the is. The same report. Yeah. I made a copy, but I must have stuck it in the wrong no, file. I, and didn't I bring thought it, it was, but I just But she did point that out, that it's already in the. Yeah, he's very good here, with that. With letting sending it to everybody, so. Thank you. If there's uh, any other discussion? All right, we have a motion on the floor to approve the consent agenda. 
in all its changes, and we have a second. All in Can favor, signify. Oh, one, one more. I'm sorry, here. just on B, 3B? Yes. That's a somewhat of a change to what we're saying that this would be the format then in our net from, from now on. We're adopting this format. Yes, there's a couple of different ones that we in have back, for instance. you to look at. And you can tell me which one you would like to see every month on, on your. That's what the back, all that. that yeah, that's what all those samples are for. They're all our current stuff, but it was just to give you a different way to look at right, it. And then, and then we have these motions coming up that we're yeah. going to. Okay. Well, we'll do this after. Okay. All right. All in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda as discussed? Signify by saying I in roll call. Yes. Aye. Aye. Roll call. Oh. Ken? No. Matt? Yes. Patty? Yes. Mary Agnes? Yes. Angie? Yes. Motion carried. All right, now we have an open session for anyone who wants to address the board, and then we'll go back to all of these mm -hmm. little housekeeping things we have to do. Yeah. Mr. Barnes, how are you, sir? Not too bad. I would like uh, to get more information at the meetings. I'm still on this deal with the fire authority. Um, I would like to know how many runs, whether that they respond to, regardless of fire or ambulance or whatever. So we can sort of track, I can sort of track how many runs are we getting compared to what we're charged for them and so on. You know what I'm saying? Because we're paying so much. What are we paying for? That's what I want to know. Okay. The type of runs they were and how many. If they could just put a number after that in the meeting, you know, like fire authority report, 15 runs, 20 runs, 10 runs, or whatever, would be helpful. We can do that for you, sir. Mr. Roshan, how are you, sir? Good. I was in March 1st of uh, well, this year. I requested the minutes of the February 10th board meeting. I was told they weren't done. Uh, I asked for a copy or a letter saying that they weren't done and the clerk told me, I'm sorry, I can't give you that. I have to check with the MTA. I'd like to know what the MTA said and why they weren't done. Okay. Do you want to field that question now or you want to Send it to him in writing, or how okay. would you like? To well, do the that? reason I called MTA is because he was requiring. Louder. The reason I called MTA was because he was requiring me to sign a piece of paper stating I did not have the minutes done yet, and to sign it and give it to him, and I refused to do that because I was working on them. I was still within the eight business days after the last board meeting. Um, we were considering um, the one snow day, the one power outage day, and the holiday, and so I was still legally within the, the eight days. And, um, and then by MTA law, you aren't allowed to look at the minutes until they're approved five days after they are approved. So, all right. Would you like to debate that right now? I've got all night, and I don't have to be up here for three minutes. I can be here, up here all night. No, you can't, sir, because we're not going to let you talk that long, honey. Would you You're like me to? My right? I have um, the authorities and responsibilities from the Township of Michigan officials, MTA, and approved copies of all minutes must be available within five business days after approval. MCL Law 15.269. All right. Anybody else like to speak? I still have the floor, man. You still haven't answered my question. Were they or weren't they done on March 1st? When they I came they in were court? in progress. They were, they, they were not done. They, it took they me were not done. No, sir. They, they were not. Thank you. When That's you, all I want to know. When you spoke with me in the morning, they weren't done. They were in progress. They were not done as of 11 o'clock on the 1st. That's right. It took me 11 hours to type them up. Thank you. They mm -hmm. weren't done on the 1st. Anyone else like to speak? Hi, 
it's it's not on the agenda, but um, I haven't heard anything from Homeland Security. And if I remember, Mike Van Milliken used to report uh, every couple months about what's going on, and especially in this day and age with what's going on. I'm disappointed that we haven't had a report. I was at a meeting last year and um, for the Planning Commission, and they did talk about Homeland Security, and um, Jeff Friedland was uh, the speaker, and he was talking about how residents should be prepared, don't wait on the government to help you, because if there's a lot of people to take care of, you might be one of the last to be taken care of. And I went up to him to talk to him and ask him, or tell him that I totally agree with him. And he saw my name tag and he saw, said, Cotterville Township. He said, I haven't seen a representative from your township in a long time. So I'm just wondering, do we have a Homeland Security person or? I'm, I'm at a loss to tell you that answer because I don't know yes, if we I have one. Homeland Security, uh, the Homeland. Liaison? Liaison, yes I am, and I told you that. How long have you been a liaison? Three years. How many reports have you given? None. That's great. Do you attend meetings or? Did you attend meetings? Because Corin uh, Jeff Friedland, no, he hadn't seen you. Oh, oh. How did you get appointed as emergency liaison? The previous president. You know what my you concern? Have plenty of jobs? No, what my con I have plenty of jobs and I volunteer, but you know what? The, the, it really bothers me because that's for our residents. If you don't want at position, um, it is volunteer. I did post last year on the website. But until you give up that position, you should still carry on your duties as that position. Well, because that's just being respectful to let's all just of us ask residents. Him, are you interested in continuing? I'll, I'll really like push it back to the board. I will give Can you we consider it? Back to the board tomorrow. Okay, very good. So it's easy and to you criticize. Don't want to serve anymore. You don't want to serve no, anymore? No, thank you. Okay. And the thing is, it's easy to criticize everybody else when you're not walking their shoes, but you don't even give us the consideration as residents to carry out what your responsibilities are. And I know we're not getting paid for them, but we do owe that to our, to our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brennan. Oh, we got one more. Good evening, board. Good evening. Um, I'm asking to uh, address the board. It's not on the agenda, but can well, I address can, the board can I now? Ask you to, yeah, can I ask you then to wait till we get to the end of the meeting because it's the, they're actually supposed to be things that are they're questioning about the agenda. And I don't have anything on Parks and Rec if that's what you're going to discuss. Maybe we could do it at the bottom there where we have public comments. Do you mind? Well, no. But it, is there any way I can put Parks and Rec on the, on the um, agenda from on now so I can address the board earlier than sure. during public comments? You I just, mean, just call. And we'll add you to the agenda. Well, I mean, you can't you can't vote on it to put it on there. Right now? No, no. From meetings from here on out. We, we can put you on the agenda. If you I'm want asking. To I'm every asking month. you right now to do that. I don't have anything to hand out to anybody regarding. No, what you're going to I don't mean as this meeting. I mean further. Like I said, just call me when you want to be on it, and if you want to, because I haven't seen you well, at a meeting. In I guess my point is, I don't want to have to call every month. Okay, well, we can put you on, and if you don't show up, I'll just, we'll just dismiss it. Okay? Sure. Thank All right. You. Now, if you don't mind waiting until the end of the meeting, we'll continue here with, uh, should we take care of these uh, motions that we want to kind of, unless we want to wait until we actually go through some of these meeting, some of these uh, reports to make sure that they're the information that you want, or what's your pleasure? <coughs> All right, well, let's continue then. We're still looking for planning commission and board members. And like I said, um, we had a couple of uh, people volunteer from the election yesterday, fortunately. Um, Marilyn Stefanik, uh, she lives on the River Road. She's my neighbor. Uh, she requested being on the planning commission. And I don't know, is Mike Higgins here? No? No, he's not. They were going to try and be here and bring uh, resumes, but they... I know Marilyn had something come up, but Mr. Higgins was here yesterday and he would like to be on the planning commission. He has a, he's an engineer, he has a background in uh, cell towers as a matter of fact, and he's pretty well versed in that. So I thought that might be something that we could uh, be valuable to us. There's, uh, I needed to add a, another 
alternate member to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, and I chose Gary Stefanik. He said he would be happy to serve. He has had some experience with the Zoning Board of Appeals previously, and so he kind of understands the, the terms and conditions. And so I'm asking, uh, unless you have someone else you would not like to nominate, I'd like to see if these three people could be added to our list. And if you have a discrepancy on that, we can separate them if that would be easier for you. Can we see the resumes first? You can, but I don't have any because they didn't bring them to me tonight. They didn't show up, so. So shall we postpone this? We can, until the if, next that, meeting? if that's your pleasure, that's what we'll do. We'll table this till next month and ask, invite them in. Is that all right? All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Yeah, I'll make a motion to table this till next month so we can all have a chance to read their uh, resumes. I'll okay. second. We have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. We are discussing this for the second time. The board looking at the township operating fee, increasing it to 1% from the current rate of 0 0.7117, which adds a 0 0.2883 to the tax bill. Um, I have included some information on that so that uh, it's easier for you to see when, uh, if you want it placed on the uh, website so that everyone can see it we can we can do it that way but we took a hundred thousand dollar true cash value home with the assessed taxable value of 50 percent of that which would be 50 grand and the current tax rate for that offering is 35 dollars and 58 and a half cents if we increase it by that 0.2883 to a full one percent for the operating of the same valued home um, it adds 14 dollars and 41 and a half cents to it so the proposed millage would be 50 bucks. On the second, I'm, I'm not asking for a action. I just want to make sure I have a chance to go through this with everybody. The second uh, meeting of the board requesting a property tax administration fee of 1% from the current point three quarters percent adds another 25% to the, or 0.25% to the tax bill. And that administration fee using the same timetable or physical parameters of 50,000, the current tax rate for a non-PRE, which is a non-primary residential exemption, <laughs> would give you a tax bill of $2,071.13. When you add that administrative fee, it would be 155.33. With a, a full tax bill, it would be a full mill, it would be $207.11. So for a, a non homestead your total bill would be for that same two thousand seventy one dollars now two two thousand two hundred and twenty six dollars and forty six cents if it's a uh, that would be excuse me that would be the 2015 cost of that uh, tax bill now it would be an increase of fifty one dollars and seventy eight cents for the two proposed 2016 that they're projecting and another Okay, what was the reason for that big link? I'm sorry? <coughs> what was the reason for that big link? The administration fee? Yeah. Because we're, it's getting very expensive to send out taxes and duplicate bills and envelopes and labor, and we're just trying to. So just this year, you're going to add 25, 30%? No, 0.25%, not 35%. And then the current tax rate for 2015, if it's uh, with the 18 mil credit, um, your bill will go up, in that same scenario will go up $29.28. <clears throat> the next meeting, the second, this is the second meeting looking at the possibility of a 1.3 mils for the fire protection for Cotterville Township to meet the current costs paid to the Marine City Fire Area Fire Authority and to Ira Township. And I've got to find out for sure if it's something that we should do. I would rather have a town hall meeting and get more input from the people 
if the Michigan Township Association says that it's something that we have to do because there are certain items that we can't put to the vote of the people because that's what they claim we're paid for, to do the research and to come to a decision on the basis of what the, the public uh, gives us input on. So at this point, using that 1.3, we're using a $100,000 home again. Uh, it would amount to about $65 in taxes for the fire authority. And there's no difference on whether it's a primary residence or whether it's a non-primary residence. So if all three of these items that I just discussed would happen to come into play, then our taxes would go up $131.19 more for a $100,000 home. So Any? triple it for a $300,000 home. I'm sorry? So triple it for a $300,000 home. That's correct, yes. So your administrative fee just went up three times more for someone with a nice home. But you're still doing the same amount of work. Right. That's the way it works. No, it's not. It's nothing new to just got a raise. Now you're going to get another one. Who got? Who got a raise? I thought the board was all raised before. I don't know. No. I haven't been involved in about three years, so I couldn't tell you if any. Did you guys get a raise? No. I don't know anything. I make a motion that we take uh, G two, three, and four. And implement a six month stay so everyone can kind of dissolve this a little bit or resolve this a little bit more in their own minds. We have some unfinished uh, business that needs to be addressed, and we're just now starting to learn a little bit more about the fire authority. You've got some questions that you even had about it and some of the uh, rates. So I would like to postpone this for the six months and we'll take a look at it then. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Okay, question on that motion? We have a discussion, go ahead. Six months and, and the reason being just for a timetable? Just so everyone can either understand this, can get it calculated for whatever their values are, and maybe if they feel that they want to know where the money is going to be used, it'll be easier to be explained to each and every one of the residents. Okay. So that was just a September question. Yes. Okay. Do we have a second to that motion? I'll second this. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to table this items number G, two, three, and four for a six month period and bring it back before this table, this board in September of 2016. All signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Did you, did you vote? Yeah, I said aye. Okay. Yeah. All right. Motion carried then. Okay. Matt, you had some things that you gave us to do some hunting on. Um, the request was for an overview of the Plant Moran meeting on 215. Um, we have the um, information on that in your packet. That was some of the minutes. Yes. You missed five. I didn't include five. Oh, I'm sorry. Second meeting of talking about the rate increase for water and sewer, um, including the accommodating of raising uh, costs on reading meters and, and maintaining the maintaining the current systems independently. Um, what I did is I called. Um, Umba, who was the company that did our rate history, rate study in 2011. I had a copy of that that I can give you. Um, and I asked for a ballpark figure on what he would charge us to do it again. He broke it down into two different um, areas. He said uh, we could do just the water or just the sewer or both. And we have uh, money of uh, Quotes, quotes for that. We also got one in the discussion that we had with Plant Moran. And was it? I don't know. I got to pull out my minutes. Let me look. They were offering to give us a template to start it. I think 
for $3,000, if I recall. It's something that should be done, I guess, more often than every five years. The last time it was done was 2010, and that was the last time that we had a rate increase. Now, ever since that's happened, we've got a rate increase from um, all the sources that we buy water from every single year. So the township has been carrying that, and that's probably why we're in such a mm -hmm. poor financial state in our water department. Mm -hmm. And that was a reason why we have to kind of get on a handle on this stuff and get it set up so we can get moving again. I know it's not a pleasurable thing to have your water rates go up, but if it decides if we run out of money and we can't handle you and we have a water main break, that's going to be a worse problem. Let me ask you, Mary Agnes. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you adopted a new plan in 6-1 of 11 done by the same people. And there's not been any of that that's been implemented as far as rate increases or anything like that. Yeah, there, since, was, a, there was a rate increase. It, uh, it you was, just said there wasn't one since 2010. Well, since this report was done. They, we hired them in November. It took them six months to do okay. it. Okay, there was supposed to be a rate effect. increase for 2012 and another one for 2013. Mm -hmm. And we haven't done it? Right. So what do we need another report for if we're not going to do what they recommend? That's a good question, but I wasn't here in 2013, so I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for I'm asking for this money now. This was done in 2011. Right. This is from Mr. Raymond. Mm -hmm. Okay, you were here at that time. Yep, I was deputy sh Correct. clerk here. So you're aware that they did it, correct? Right. You're aware of what it said? Right. But nothing was ever done? That's correct. Okay. It was never done but in the deputy clerk doesn't have any power to do that. I know that, but you're aware that it was there, so you said that we haven't ever done anything, but we have had the report done before. We have had recommenda recommendations for this before, and we didn't follow the recommendations before. Okay. Why would it or will it be any different now? Because since then we have added small water districts and there should be some different rates for these different districts because of where the supply comes from. It all shouldn't be at the Marine City rate. That's the way it was set up. So I, I can't change that, but we can go back and look at every single one and I think that's what should happen. If we if we can get water cheaper somewhere else somewhere else, I think that's what we should do. Pass that, that savings on to that, that district. But that's not what was done when when uh, Mr. Raymond was here. Okay, but it was adopted by Cotterville Township. No, it was not. It didn't appear to be, no. If you go back and look at the minutes, it was passed in June of 2011. Um, Kenny, what's your point? I mean, I'm just saying we, we had one of these Do you want a rate reports. study? If you don't, just say you don't want a rate study. Well, if we're not going to do what they say, why do we want to spend the money? Well, do you not want to do what they say? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. Are you going to go back and charge for not doing it for the time from the last well, rate study? Well, of course, because if they've raised their rates all along and we haven't, don't you think we got to play catch up? How I else do. are you going to do are it? Are you going to go back and back charge all the, the people? Not now? back charge them, no, but they're going to have to work that into the formula to make sure that we have enough to pay the bills. I think you may want to look at the last rate study and their recommendations, what was adapted by the and accepted by the township. It may cover everything that you're looking or accepting or wanting or expecting. Okay, we're going to we're going to wait then until Have you seen the old report? I just got it in by email this afternoon. No, I haven't okay. opened it up, but it's well, right it was here. Well, it's a 31% you want to see it. for one year, 31% for next year, plus any increases that are passed on to us from the cities. Well, that's what we had to do to build a reserve up. But that's what we haven't done. Right. If we were to do what they recommended on their last rate study, would that get us to where we need to be without having to do another rate study? If you want to just try that, we can. Do you want to read it and understand it? And well, then maybe we can figure out if that'll be what we want to do. I would love to do that for you. Okay. I'll get everything together and I'll even let you read it. How's that? I've got it. I've read it. That's why I'm asking you. You've read the whole study? Enough of it to know that there was rate increases that have not been implemented. And with the recommendations, whenever there was a rate increase from a water supplier, that we need to add that much more to it. Yes, that's the point of this whole conversation. But we've done that, and the township has not done that in the past. We have the rate study. We have the recommendations. We had the vote. It was done. 
Okay. While you were still here with the previous board, nothing was ever implemented. The one we did get an increase the one year, but the other two, there was a new board that was that was their responsibility to do the next two increases. Because I know there was a rate increase when I was on the board. How much was it? It went. I don't remember, but it was it was like ten fifty or something. Yeah. Is what the went up to ten fifty. Right. Yes. Right. And after that, there was a new board. It was up to them to implement the, the uh, additional. Was this costs. ever passed on to the next board that there were rate increases or well, a water study? They could never find anything. Shouldn't they have checked that out then? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Can that's she possibly yeah. could find out what the previous? It okay. Did the previous board. Easy no. <laughs> Well, let's say they didn't do enough. You're only well, one man. I agree. And there was but there was a rate study. Board. There were rate increases, and there was suggestions on rate increases oh. above and beyond. It did not include the new water suppliers. It really shouldn't be a necessity if we went by the same formula for the water suppliers. 31% increase each year. I think if you read it, it might make it a little easier, and then we could make this same decision next month after you have a chance to read it and dissect it. Is there any more discussion? Yes, please. I see the report and the schedule went out to 331.18. Maybe in following along with Mr. Shirk here, rather than, as Plant Moran suggested and the other, the other company spoke with this uh, or whatever, might we be able to use part of this study rather than starting from scratch? This is done and projected out to 331.18, mm -hmm. which might lower the cost of the study. So if we all review these studies and maybe ask their opinion, rather than just saying, here you go, here's 15,000, do it. Oh, I didn't want to pay anything. Well, I know you did. But so I think well, we can This do is a good way to not pay anything. This is a good way to read what we've already paid for that's what we'll do and then. implement it. That's what we'll do then. But, but, that's well, what everybody wants to do. Because then, because then, unfortunately, you didn't do three years. Now we're going to say instead of paying ten fifty, you're going to pay twenty five fifty because we had to catch up for three years. I don't think that would be fair, and I surely wouldn't get most of these people and say, "Well, I'm going to get twenty five fifty without doing a study and research, I, I, which I think is what you're looking. For. That's what I'm. So everybody can understand it, dissect it, and then see if we can work off of this without spending any more money. Mm -hmm. And obviously Submit. we have to ask for some help. And weren't the water rates, I believe our engineer explained that last before, is it part of this rate structure of the, um, the, saw, grant. the grant, saw Grant? The Saw Grant, yes. Okay. I was just trying to make a comment. Uh, part of the Saw Grant is to cover a rate methodology study for the sewer, but you base your sewer rates on the water. Right. So we will be developing that for you anyway. Part of the Saw Grant, it's already paid for. Um, just in general, when you have a water rate um, and you have um, a supplier, normally you revisit your, your rates annually. Right. Every time the supplier changes the rates, I typically do that for other municipalities. We revisit the rates and see if we're, we can increase or decrease or maintain the same rate for, the, for that year. So we look at their rates and then we make a recommendation to the board and the board will make a decision if your rates increases or not. Not necessarily if there is a, a recommendation for increase every year that the board will go for it. It depends on many factors. But Ken is right, you, you would play catch up at the end. Like uh, if your reserve need to build up in, the, in five years but you haven't changed your rates before, now you, you're looking at a big hike. But these are just um, services that we do for other municipalities. Now, um, a word of caution, your auditors only look at revenue um, portion of it. You may end up doing a water audit, uh, which I understand that you have leaks in the system and your sewer not necessarily um, reflect an actual sewer going into your sewers because of the infiltration. Infiltration. So we have to take all these factors into, into consideration. Um, we can't just say, okay, here's our bill. We add 10% to it, and our residents will pay that much. There's, there are many factors into a water audit. Um, 
And we, we could do that for you. Um, and we are providing this to other municipalities. Food for thought. Okay, so the one that you're doing with the saw grant, is that something you've started already or no? Not yet. Uh, we're still when do looking. you project to start that? Uh, completion date would be what? We're trying to address the uh, inspection part, and we're still talking to contractors trying to lower their prices so we can move to the next portion. We need to know what we have before we go to the next task, which one of them is the, the rate methodology study. Um, because if I don't know what problems I have, I don't know what to budget for, for the next whatever. Um, so we need that addressed. And we're in discussion right now with five contractors. <coughs> Hopefully you will get a reasonable price that we can go forward. And, and once that done. Can we expect that? Do you have any idea yet? When is your meeting set up for? Geez, oh, we were waiting for that last year. <laughs> But it's been taking so long because every contractor is busy. These saw grants have been awarded left and right to every municipality uh, that applied for. And the county, uh, many, many counties uh, received a huge amount of money. So everybody's busy and the prices went up 20, 30 percent. So we're trying to work with some local contractors, trying to award them three municipalities together, Cotterville, City of Yale, and Lenox. Hopefully we'll get a, a discount on that. Um, we do have two other municipalities come, coming on board very, very soon. So we may end up having five of them trying to get, you know, Price. even better prices. But my best guess, next two months, we'll uh, get an idea. Thank you. Go. All right, well, I'll tell you what I did because I contacted when I contacted Umbo, I set up a tentative meeting for uh, tomorrow at 1 o'clock. I will call him and cancel that because I wanted to see if there was anything he could give us as far as, a, as an example. He was not going to send this to me until he came to the meeting, and I told him that I couldn't give him an answer on what we were going to do until I presented the board with this. And we didn't get a chance to duplicate it, but what we'll do is uh, table this then for another month. Is that well, your yeah, pleasure? Let's read what his last one is. It may be the, the format how he laid it out last time. And if we follow his suggestions that are now four years behind, it may bring you up, you know, and it may show you how they come up with it. All right, do you want to set the, have this meeting continue, or do you want me to cancel it? I don't know why we want it to continue until you understand the last one that he gave you. Well, it, it'll only take a day to read it. I mean, do you, want to, do you want him to come in and explain it to you, or do you want to just postpone it altogether until you use saturated it? enough that you know it well enough to do you want to pay him anything. for him to say he's not going to charge me nothing he's coming out to sell me this it's a freebie okay, but well i got him here i'm going to find out what we have to do but if you don't want to go that far i'll be happy to cancel it if it's a freebie that's up to you he gave us he gave us a guideline we didn't follow it because obviously somehow it got overlooked somewhere if you want to read it or if you want him to come and explain it to you, his last one, if that's what everyone needs, then continue on. Well, I can read it. So if you if you don't want the dis instruction, then I'll just cancel it. But I, I can we can figure this out. I understand water and sewer. Why don't so you just ask him thing. if you can just postpone that until after you have a chance to read this one and see if this is something we're going to implement already. We don't need to pay for more or to get any other guidelines until we see what is useful out of the last one that we paid for. Okay, so we'll table it for, we'll cancel the meeting and we'll table it for another month? Ever how long it takes you to read it. Okay. <coughs> if it's just me reading it, then what is the point? <laughs> I mean, I thought you You're, wanted to understand this. If we've you, got one. We don't need another one. Okay. We can implement this one if you'd like. Use these numbers on today's date for Marine City. We need to take, and we can format off of that for either IRA and for clay. Right. That's that's the idea behind a template, right? So well, if you, you don't if think you, this is a template enough? Yes. Yes, it okay. is. Okay. Well, that's if you want him to come and see if he'll give you another one, go ahead. But we have his report. Okay. It's what you're going to do with it from here on out. Do you need a template of that? 
No, I know what to do. Okay. But I'm trying to get some unity here and see if we can get somebody to, if you, if you, I'll cancel the meeting and we'll digest this for another 30 days and we'll put it on the agenda for the next. Is that to your pleasure? Sure, that's fine with me. Okay, you can read it tonight if you motion? want. No, I'm not going to make a motion on that. We have a, res a response. We have a study. We have a recommendation. Nothing has been done. If you want to implement and make me make a motion that we adopt this a second time for the board, I'll do that gladly. But then does that mean you're going to start putting these rate increases into effect immediately? No, no. You've got to sit down and, and we've got to calculate more than just this. There's, there's more to do than just what's... But I just wanted to see if you wanted a professional to come in and do it, if you wanted to do it. This is the same professional that you're asking to come and talk to you tomorrow. Right, but we also had a discussion with the with the accountant, too. Do you remember the CPA? And he said that we needed one of these. We've got one of these. He, he offered what are you going to do with one of these? Kenny, what do you think we're going to do with it? We're going we're gonna to go through it and see if we can't make it fit. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Then... Then do it and see if it makes it fit. If it works, we can talk about it next meeting. Okay, that's what we'll do. Okay. This is continuing with uh, Matt's uh, questions about certain things he wanted. Copy of the ORV ordinance and the ordinance that reflects the township's position on this regarding this topic. Mrs. Runyon, can I ask you to step to the podium, please, and tell me if you found out anything about the counties? Yeah. Um, okay. I'll email you everything that I'm talking about tonight, and I've got the email ready to go. Um, what I did was checking the planning minutes it revealed that uh, there was a motion made by Commissioner Pelk and second by uh, Commissioner Treadway that Cotterville not have our own ordinance reference and default to the compliance with the county ordinance in this regard. The motion was carried unanimously. I spoke with uh, planner Lori Eschenberg recently at the St. Clair Metropolitan Planning Commission regarding the county ORV and ATV ordinance. She informed me that the ordinance never moved forward. I did see one on the internet, but it wasn't publicized, and it um, wasn't signed. So that's why I called her. And she said that they never moved forward with it. So she informed me that Governor Schneider signed a House Bill number 4284 on September 25, 2013, now Public Act 117, 118, and 119 of 2013. Um, I will be attaching the press release. Um, and I have the actual ordinance. The thing is, uh, which I'll need you guys to look through, it basically suggests that uh, a municip municipality may pass an ordinance allowing a permanently, this one says disabled person operating an ORV in that municipality. Um, it talks about using the shoulders and uh, uh, to connect to roads or to get to a park. Um, but it, my implication is that it suggests that they okay us to do this. Problem is, and the reason why we want to default, is we don't have a, a means of enforcing it. We don't have an act of police. How do you enforce an ORV ordinance? So I will send you all this information, and we can go from there. If there's anything that you want the Planning Commission to follow through with this. I would appreciate if you review it and let me know, okay? So, any questions? Does that answer anything, Matt? Well, I guess the question is, do we have, we don't have an ordinance. We don't have an ordinance. And that House Bill, I think you said 4284, with the governor? Yeah. The state? Yeah. Do you have to adopt that, or that, has that been passed? Or, that's not even a play, correct? That's, is, is that, it in play? It, it, it is. It was passed in um, September 25, 2013. But review it, because my impression of it, and I haven't talked to anybody through the state, um, and I really had to, calling um, Metropolitan Planning, the first call I had, they kept passing me on. And then finally I called again and persevered, and then somebody got back with me and said she will make sure she got back with me. And then she said, 
No, it never went through. And it, apparently they looked at it in 2014. This was 2011, right shortly after I became chairman that, um, right before I became chairman that it was brought up. Actually, I'll have all the minutes that I'll send you to. Um, and then that was that summer in 2011 that we actually had that conversation. But uh, it, that, like I said, the county never went through. What She said there's 32 townships, I think she, I believe she said, in the Sinclair County. I don't know what the reason was. They never followed through. Maybe maybe they're thinking that's a lot for the Sheriff Department. I don't, I don't really know what the thought is behind it. I, mean, I appreciate all the research. Now, I guess the question is when, when somebody, a resident, one of our residents comes in and asks one of right. our, our staff, our treasurer, our clerk, or, for the deputies or anybody in our office, what's the answer you give to a resident? That's what we're just looking for. Yeah, if yeah. We have one. Where is it? If we don't. Well, we don't. And so. and uh, I mean, I'll further go through the state and find out if there's. Do we have to have an ordinance, and who will enforce it? Because that's our biggest problem. You know, I mean, if the state police would enforce it, that would be fine. It, it, the sheriff apparently, if it's not their ordinance, they're not going to enforce it. I don't see that that would be. And how do we enforce an ordinance even if we have one? And, and I appreciate that, but, but I'd like to have some kind of answer for our citizens. Yes. Yeah. citizens say, well, you don't have an okay. ordinance. I go driving down the highway. Okay, it's well, just life. read it over because I'd like your critique and I'd like your thoughts on what all uh, this information that I'm sending you. I'll, uh, I've got it read in an email. I've been busy working on the master plan. Um, so you look at it, critique. Give me suggestions or ideas of what you're thinking, and I will take it the next step. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Just don't go away, Pat. Go ahead. Well, that's the one that I printed off for mm -hmm. your cousin because she came in and asked me because I said this is. Yeah, they have a mm -hmm. Ira does too. I think we might have a copy of yeah, both of those. We have both of those. Somewhere. Smith? Uh, just down to normally, the code enforcement officer would enforce <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a code enforcer right we're now. Not even one brave enough to do it. <laughs> we're not even. Uh, were there's uh, many ordinances we're not enforcing. They do have authority to enforce these ordinances. Well, we need. Uh, we have to. And they work with the private supervisor. And. Oh, good. According to our lawyer, nobody issues tickets unless we change it to an international code of enforcement, according to the last code enforcer. And that would obliviate all the all the oranges that we've done in the past. It's like being caught between a rock and a hard place. The way the situation is, it everybody has a lot to say. The lawyer has this circle talk to tell us how to handle it, and it, none of it makes any sense. When the planning commission, as to in an effort to help the board in the past, to research of what maybe we haven't covered, uh, how to enforce oranges, um, and, and I asked our um, attorney what the outline of what he has for code enforcement he basically told me it wasn't in my job description i uh, this was not to take over for the board it was in an effort to add and help them and do the research so because they're busy with what they're doing to try to find out maybe other townships have a, a similar to ours would have a similar way and it's like you're constantly hitting your head against a brick wall trying to accomplish anything <laughs> and get anything done because it's 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 circle talk <laughs> but that's my opinion okay any anybody else want to discuss any further on this can we go on to the next item we're still doing matt's uh questions that he had some things he wanted done. This is update on the master plan, and that's you again. Okay. So, as I said at the joint, I think it was at the joint meeting, uh, last meeting we didn't, last month we didn't have a quorum, so we didn't meet, which was fine because we really didn't have a lot to discuss. But um, I sent everything I had with the edits that we did to clear zoning, and uh, this is what I said to them. The, com the Planning Commission has finished our review of the master plan, five-year review, and has had the joint meeting with the Board of Trustees. We would like to have Clear Zoning look it over and update the charts from the beginning pages of the 2011 review. We are on a, t uh, a tight budget and would appreciate a cost quote. <clears throat> We will produce and mail copies to local governments. We will do the printing of the review. I have attached our updates thus far. They are reflected in red. We'll talk to you soon. <clears throat> so her response after waiting a little while, 
She said, attach, please find a work program and fee base on two phases. One, a review phase. Two, an update phase. Feel free to contest it. Contact us if you have any questions. I will be out of the office on Monday, but should be returned on next week. <clears throat> so this is what we got. <clears throat> now the original fee base, which we did not want to use, was seventeen thousand dollars for them to help us for to get through the master plan review. So the response I got was plan phase one, master plan tentative outline, which is things we already covered. 5,375 bucks. You, you will get this in an email too. And then the phase two, uh, and it's milestone, conduct online community attitude survey, and, and a whole bunch of things that are thousands of dollars. The total of these two, and that was 13,400, the total was $18,775. Now we went from $17,000 for a total plan review to now $18,775, and the comment was, uh, phase two would include an additional four meetings with planning commission. If the planning commission decides to expand the scope suggested above, there may be added costs. For example, additional meetings with the planning commission would be $800 per meeting. The result, resulting update master plan document would likely serve the township's long-range planning needs for an additional 10 to 15 years. That's not what we wanted to do. At this point, where we are financially in the township, we just wanted to officially review, do the planning review for the five-year review and be updated. So I have taken upon myself to do the charts. You go to SEMCON, you get the new information, you do the percentages, and so I've updated the charts. I will send you all of this. Um, I will be done next week. You can look at it. I want everybody's critique. I'll, I'll be going to the Planning Commission, be going to the board. I want everybody's critique because at the next Planning Commission meeting, I plan on um, finding out a date for the public hearing, which would probably be the following planning meeting because according to our bylaws, our public hearings are held before a planning meeting. And then it's less cost too because it's all part of one, it's first part of a meeting. So anyway, that's where we are. Any questions? Very good. Shocked. <laughs> Shocked. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Townships are. Thank you for money you do for our township. The last item on your list was a copy of a recreation plan which I supplied you. Thank you. Is there anything else we can help you with? Yes. All right. We'll go on to new business. Uh, I gave you a bunch of uh, reports that I asked Angie to run for us, uh, and they're both clerk's office supplied reports and treasurer's office supplied reports. They're going to satisfy the new board members and the old board members for policies and procedures for internal scheduling and production of agenda packets for, for the current board. The copies are attached. If you want any or all of these things, we'll do this for you every month so that you can see I, I know that the uh, some of the recommendations that we received were done quarterly. I don't th think we're in a financial position to wait for a quarter report. If there's a mistake, we need to find it in 30 days, not four months or three months. But that's, again, whatever the board wants to do. Did you get a chance to look at any of these reports? Is there anything there that stands out to you that is better than another? or Well, according to MTA, um, it's required that uh, the clerk and the treasurer combined here together can provide the revenue and expenditure reports. That will cover the quarterly requ report required. And uh, they said it's common practice that um, we, rep we provide this prov uh, report monthly. So we can provide that. And um, the balance sheet is required for the clerk to provide at the, um, uh, for the board meeting every month. And I also have a motion here I'd like to um, make in regards to that. Sure. Can I read it out loud? Okay. Motion to amend the agenda policy that was approved in August 12, 2015. Clerk shall provide the revenue and expenditure report monthly, which is in accordance to the department treasury, which states the treasurer is to provide a detailed revenue report by fund and the clerk is to provide a detailed expenditure report by fund. According to BSNA, the revenue and expenditure report, which we just stated, will cover what is needed by both treasurer and clerk. So I'd like to make a motion that the clerk provides the revenue expenditure report monthly to cover those two requirements. 
Okay, I would second that. Okay. Any discussion? Please. So what you're saying is, go ahead. I, I was just going to point out the the date on here. Not we're not till the end of March, so that these figures are not going to be correct on these reports. We shall always be in the month before. The month prior. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that was discussed earlier. Yeah, we just okay. your husband brought that to our attention today, so that is a good thought. We will correct that. This, Can I ask you a question? Go sure. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and fill that. I just this the report you're referring to is this one then. The revenue and expenditure report? Yeah, the one that we were probably... And that meets the requirements that you just referred yeah. to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and then the next motion I'd like to make is a motion... Wait, wait, a we got we gotta... still a little bit of discussion. Oh, if yeah. we go okay. through and we start doing the new reports, like we're asking for and like we should have, will anybody read them? Our percentages over here, yes. you see how, how far we're off? Yes. Are we going to do anything about that? Or are we going to just wait until the end of the year? Well, I would think that we wouldn't that. continue to have it be like that. I mean, there's nothing Notch I can do that you're already over some some 200 percent on some of these, but that wasn't this board that did that. It was a previous board that did that. Well, I and, know that. That's why I'm asking on these. But there's nothing once we, we can get do these about. reports. Are we going to try to adjust these and correct those areas, and or try to figure out where the monies are going to go? Well, all we can do is that. adjust it. We, we can't come up with any more money because we're going to be right at the... But we can make sure that we don't spend any more money. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's, that's the idea. Exactly. Okay. Go ahead. So then when we're over, and that's why we were asking for these reports, then we should amend those line items when we go over. Well, I thought about doing that more often, but I was told that um, to do it, as, you know, just keep track of them. And then what we have to do is when we do our final audit, mm -hmm that they want them all done at that point. And that's what I thought took place here <coughs> at midterm when, when uh, before we came in because they, we were told that the, the budget was balanced. And then when the first report that Angie ran, there was all this red ink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's when you started asking for that again. Mm -hmm. And it took us a while to get it the way you wanted it. And I think we've got her now, but uh, a lot of that stuff we can't fix. Just like I, that one eleven thousand dollar item that you were questioning right. about, that was that was done before. Right, and it was in there, and, and I agree. But um, it was done. Problem, I guess Mary, what, what Ken just said, these line items. That's why we wanted these, and, and we asked last year for them, was so that we could track where we are, our responsibilities as, as trustees, and that's what we want to do. So if we have to amend something rather than keep spending, which I'm not pointing at or anybody. That appears what happened. We didn't stay within the confines of our budget. Right, but if there's an adjustment that we can make with the same amount of money changing a line item to a different department or whatever, mm -hmm. or even within the department, uh, for example, mileage, mm -hmm. you can you know, switch it, yeah, switch it around to make it work. Thank you. Can I have The reason that $11,000 is short in the red, it was never budgeted for. That's why you amend the budget periodically to make it to work. Make those budgeted items down down. Right. Because you have to have them done before your end of the year right. before the state will come in. Well, that's when I asked the auditor what she thought if, if we could fix it right now, and she said, well, wait till you get your uh, all those journal entries in. And we yeah, still haven't done that, that yet. That won't so. be all of them now. No, that won't be all of them, but it'll be a big share of them. So, and once we get that, we'll be able to see where we're at. No, nothing that wasn't budgeted is going to be there. There's a lot of zeros that's why on you stuff. Get a budget report at least every month or quarter, and you go through those line items and, mm -hmm. and you, adjust them. You adjust them. Yeah, we'll have to have a we'll have to adjust them on a, if you want to do it on a quarterly is just basis. A guessing game. Sure it is. That's sure all it is. is. Unless you specifically want to buy something and you don't want to cost, then you can budget for it. Mm -hmm. But if you're just guessing at what you might spend, right. that's all it is. And it's a good that's guess. That's why you amend the budget. Right. But they recommended that we not amend it now till, like, now, this this time of year. But right now, yeah, but you want to do it before I, I want to do it. I want to do it every other month if we have to, just to make sure we're on target. If we look at this every month, we're going to see where we're off, but, but, and we can attack it. The deputy saying is, we have days before the fiscal year ends. Right. So yeah, it has no, to be no, adjusted. We, we can't wait till next month. Yeah, and you should no, have already had a budget meeting. Oh, I know. Because it's very time consuming. Yes, it is.
All right, do you want to tell me which one of these that you think you want to do, or you want to do them all, or how are you? Well, I still have things, yeah. Are you still going through more stuff? Well, right. do we need to? Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. have a second? Right. Well, Mary Agnes seconded my motion. Okay, okay so do we... Do you roll call or anything for that? No, these, okay. this isn't that. Okay. <laughs> those so, in favor signify by saying. Read motion again, please. Oh, the whole thing? Just read it briefly. I mean, okay, well, basically. This report with the Yeah, well, basically, right. uh, the clerk will provide the revenue and expenditure reports um, monthly, which will mm -hmm. cover the two requirements by the Department of Treasury. Right. You know, so it'll cover her report that she has to provide quarterly and my report that I have to provide quarterly. But they said it's common practice that this report is provided monthly. So from now on, I'd like to provide that. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Yep. That was your motion, and I yes. second it. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. Motion carried. Can I say the next motion, please? Okay. Motion to amend the agenda policy approved in August 12, 2015. Clerk shall provide a balance sheet by fund monthly, and the treasurer will provide a summary report of cash activity by fund and a summary report of cash activity by bank account, certificate of deposit, and an investment report monthly. All of these um, are required um, under the Department of Treasury. Um, note, um, these reports are listed on page 33 of the Department of Treasury book. And um, I can provide a copy of that for you later. I didn't have time to do it before. Um, would, so that's my motion. That motion. Okay. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. We have a second. We have any discussion? Is that report similar to the one that we've been getting? Yes? Well, um, it's it's going to have all of it in there. It's going to have the cash and, yeah. the, and the CDs. But that CD yeah. form that she has is... But all the CDs are on the report, that report I noticed. Okay. They are? That you print, no. Well, okay. I, to, it's yeah. yeah the the, the titles it. aren't the same. Yeah. I have to yeah. Show it to okay. That's fine. Yeah. And also, um, might I add to that? Um, MTA also requires that these reports are generated through the BSNA program. Mm -hmm. So okay. Well, the, that's where the figures come from. Mm -hmm. But there is no unless you saw something that shows a format with all the CD numbers and what the balances are in the BSNA program. Okay, well, we can work together yeah. and look for that report. Okay. Well, don't, don't do away with that. No, 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 because that is perfect. That's got the whole account they go yes. into. And well, yes. Well, the motion that I'm making is just right. according right. to what was stated in the Department of Treasury. Okay, right. so that's my motion. We're just adding and another we, one. We have a second. Any yeah, other further you second discussion? It. <laughs> you second it. I'll say that we. Any, any further discussion? All right, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Okay. Can I make a motion then? Okay. Well, yes, sir. Whenever a CD is changed, cashed, or the amount varies, can the whole board be aware of it? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, Do you so, want that, so that the, let's say the treasurer doesn't cash in one of the CDs to pay bills because the general fund mm -hmm. is out. Anything, can the whole yeah. board be aware of every one of the moves well, that happens with a CD? That's why their signatures yeah. are required on, if I make any type of a change, their signatures yeah. But that doesn't mean the whole board gets it. I, that, that's why we need to generate the reports. Or do you want it done by email? It's not at the board meeting. I know it's not required. No, I'm asking for He's it. asking for that. And we did have it where I could not cash the CD without board approval. Well, we did, but we don't now. That's why I'm. Well, that's what I'm addressing now. There's a lot of things we've all assumed. I would. I would second that motion. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Any further discussion? Yes, I have one more thing <coughs> in regards we, we to this. Vote. We're oh, okay. Vote. We're gonna vote this. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to vote on this or go ahead? Because yeah. this is Kent's. Do you want to okay. amend that one? No, we'll vote on this oh. one. Oh, this okay. is Kent's. Mm -hmm. All right. Those. In favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Okay, go ahead. Okay. It's just in regards to the same matter that we've been talking about. Um, the third motion here is motion to amend the agenda policy approved in August 12, 2015, adding that the treasurer will also provide a bank reconciliation report monthly. Now, I do want to note that um, MTA and the Department of Treasury is not requiring this, um, but MTA said it, it was common practice that the treasurer provides this on a monthly basis. I would so move. Okay. There's discussion. 
Any and discussion? I thought, were, I thought you. Were. Which report would that be in this packet? It's called the Bank and Reconciliation Report. Mm -hmm. I think it's back here where the treasure stuff is. That's right. It's back. Yeah, it's, 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 under right under. Okay. it's under the treasurer's reports in the beginning. Okay. E3B? Yeah, and mine's aren't titled. Mine isn't titled. Okay. So. Well, I, and, and the reason I'm not opposed to it, but I'm trying to learn, mm -hmm. you, you, it's not recommended, but you, you think it's a good point. What, what's the purpose for the board? When I look at this, the value of this to me? It's to balance to what the clerk is doing on her side. It, we, we want to see that um, the treasurer is reconciling the monthly bank statements every month. And so it should show a zero balance if she's reconciling every month. And, and as it was explained earlier, this isn't because of the date ending. That's why this particular report's a little off. Right. Correct. Well, that and there's some things there. She, Patty assures me she can she can right, figure out, a, build that the thing to show that what that uh, amount is. Well, it's because is I'm still working when you do a bank reconciliation, you work do it for the, the month, month before. Prior. Mm -hmm. So we had discussed this earlier in right. reference to what you had said earlier, Patty. Right. Uh, we had talked that all reports from now on will be um, dated the month before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll so end from at the now end of the on, month. yes. So, so I guess in hearing what you're saying, this allows us to see that we're, we're zeroed in. Right. Yes. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It will show us when where we're off. And if we're off, we'll find out where it's exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Is that all the? Okay, we we got a motion on the floor. We had so I I made you made the motion. I'll second again. Yes. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. 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 Please. Those opposed. <laughs> I hear none. <laughs> motion carried. All right. The last thing in this new business is um, Matt mentioned about a, and I got it also from our. Uh, Township Assessor that to draft a letter to the state senator and the state representative, which I did, uh, suggesting our displeasure in the governor's 2017 budget to reduce the revenue sharing by $5.8 million, eliminating 100 townships out of 1,240 from this program that received funding in the past two years in uh, fiscal years. And we're a little bit nervous about whether we're included in that lucky hundred. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well. Are we, are we lucky 13? I don't know. It could be. <laughs> and I just thought that obviously we, we can't afford to lose more revenue. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to add all of you, but if we put it out, our senator and our state rep. I'm going to find my letters. What did I do with them? I wrote two letters, one to the state rep and one to the senator. There it is. They did that in the past. It doesn't count for well, he's trying to change the rules, yeah. So, would you give that to your husband, please? And this one is for you. So, if you want to make any changes, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll put these in the mail tomorrow. There's another one. That's different. You got yours? Okay. No, not this. Can I give you two? These two are the same. One is to Dan Lowers, yeah, the representatives, one. and one is I to Senator Cavalier. Yeah, I do. Okay, here. To Dan Lowers. Okay. They look the same. Well, it's the same wording, it's just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same wording, it's just to a different gentleman. So. Should I read it, or are you happy with the way it is? I'm very happy. Thank you, okay. Mary Shepard. All right, we will send this off then tomorrow with your permission. And let's see what's next on the agenda, because I think we're about done. I, I had a main oh, motion have... earlier that never got closed out. Which is that? It was about a motion to not upload the agenda packet to minutes on demand before a scheduled board meeting. Yeah, let's kind of discuss all of that so okay. that we know what series of events we're going to do. We're going to do our agenda, and that's going to be put on the, on the website, right? Yes, on minutes so, on demand. Minutes on demand. Mm -hmm. And that will be done as soon as it's done. Mm -hmm. There will also be a packet that we'll put in the lobby like I've been doing since I've been here. Um, there will be no package put together and put on the on, uh, minutes on demand regarding the meeting because mm -hmm. there's information in here that we want, we don't want floating around. There's, if there's something in particular that a person wants out of that packet, 
as long as it's something that doesn't jeopardize anything that's going on, we'll make a copy for them. They just go to the window and the clerk or the, or the deputy clerk or the uh, deputy treasurer can make the copy. Um, and then when the minutes are completed, mm -hmm. um, it's, this is the part that's going to be your, your call. If you want the minutes put in as a draft and put on the website before the meeting so that the public can read that before the next board meeting, or if you want to wait until they're approved and then put them on the minutes. And that's following MTA law. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that was the stickler, I guess. Which is following MTA law? Uh, not putting them up on minutes on demand until five yeah. days after they've been approved by the board. So the three things in the motion are putting the agenda or the agenda only, uploading that to minutes on demand before the board, and then not uploading the packet to the minutes on demand, and then only uploading the minutes five days after the they've been approved. So those, the those are the three board. things. Okay. Now, is there any arrangement other than that that you want to? I mean, we're discussing it now. Do you want to? Do you want to change anything, or are you happy with the way that's put together? If you are, then that would be the motion, and I would need a second. Yeah, we no have second. Okay. Oh. With with the discussion on that, we're going through a discussion now. Yes, Good. sir. How many days before a meeting will that be posted? Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, agenda. The agenda. Yeah. To I try to get it done on on mm -hmm. Thursday before the meeting, mm -hmm. so that you have a weekend to go through it, and then you could come in on Monday or Tuesday and and tell me what things you want to fix, that things you want changed. Since everyone talks about the past, I'm going to do it for a moment. It was always understood with the current board previous to you, that it would be the whole agenda packet would be available to each of the board members uh, eight days prior to the meeting. And was told at that time by other members that it was a policy that was implemented by the township. I can't recite the policy, I'm just saying that's what it was and that's what it was always practiced as prior to a meeting where sometimes we don't get our packets in, in until uh, they're not completed or whatever. I'm just asking, is there going to be a timeline or is there a, a time frame that we want to work with them that will be a standard? Well, it's, I mean... I'm just asking. Have because you been waiting for seven to eight yeah, days? Yeah, I've, I've been trying to get them completed by the end of the day on Thursday because I don't like working Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to get them to ready. And so that was kind of my internal rule. But when people are, are bringing me more things to do, to look up and to research, and, to, and then to, I, I can't do well, the I things that. I'm supposed to do. So that does take, take up a lot of my time. If you, do we want to set a date like? Do we want to have it? Do we want, like I say, I don't know if it was a policy, but I was told that they had to be out eight days prior to the meeting. Whether that happened with the previous board to the one that I'm up. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't saw, know how often you used to get them. I, I got them out early before. because I because I wanted them out and, and ready in people's hands. I delivered them like that when I was working for Raymond too. Okay. But I, I are we going to continue any kind like of a, a, a format? Yes. yes, a format of when they're. That's up. what I'm hoping to do. Will eight days be it? Seven days be it? Well, the Thursday before. The meeting. We'll receive them no later than the Thursday before the meeting. That's yeah. fine. Just so we've got something uniform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If if there's not a policy and, and this is just a practice, just so we've all got on the same page. Well, that's the practice. But if something comes in that that I have to handle ahead of it, then it could. It's be, not a policy, though. Is that correct? I uh, no. It's just a it's just a procedure that I that I hold myself to. But if I can't get the work done because too many other things come in. I mean, I'll tell you, most of my day is answering the phone and having people come through that door. And I'm here every day. And after we shut the door, then I can work on this kind of stuff. But, it, you know, there's phone calls to make and people to get back with. And that's, that takes a lot of my time. So when, and then when, like, Matt comes in almost every month with a whole list of things he wants me to go through and find for him, which, you know, that's, his, that's my job, to, to assist him with his questions. And that's what we're trying to do. But sometimes it, it takes a little time to do this. Patty's terrific at digging stuff up, so she can she helps me if I get where I can't can't get to it. Then she comes in with a whole list of things that she has all figured out for me. 
So, but that takes time to go through the minutes. She can go through minutes like crazy. So it's Thursday. That's my that's okay. my target that's, date. That's fine. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. Just for discussion, since we're discussing it. Yeah. Anything asked of, in fairness to the clerk or supervisor yourself, in preparing these, if we want something, for instance, that ordinance I asked about, the ORV ordinance. That's why I had the ORV ordinances with me that I gave you. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that a little bit with the last clerk. Anything that we want, we do the homework as best of our ability and give it to you so mm -hmm. you have the information versus saying, I want this mm -hmm. and don't give you anything. By Tuesday, so that you still have time to prepare the pack. It's not fair for us to drop it on Thursday and say, I want it Thursday. So it has to be to you by two. That's the way it was by in the past. Tuesday. Okay, well, let's make it Monday then. That's fine. But it in fairness a, to those preparing. Let's, let's get a couple of days because yes. it, it, takes, it takes three hours after I have everything put together, everything duplicated, I line it up on that table over there and it takes me three hours to assemble it for everybody. Every time you cut down the tree. Yeah, <laughs> cut down the tree. Monday's reasonable, just so we, Monday would be we all get on the same page. Yeah, if you can, that'll give you a weekend to get something before you have to give it to me and then we'll go from there. If that, if that's, that's reasonable to me, if it doesn't work out, we'll change it again, but let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have, do we make that a motion or are you happy with it or? I don't think we have to make a motion as right, long as everybody's just, uh, got the same understanding. Yep, that's what we're trying to do. Okay, announcements. You had some announcements there. You missed one. What did I miss? The compensation committee. Oh, the compensation committee. I'm sorry, I had it crossed out. Okay, um, we were going to establish, reestablish. We're going to reaffirm or reestablish, ever how you want to have it worded properly, uh, to reconfirm to the compensation committee that they're still there, they're yes. still on if they need to be reappointed, whatever needs to be done, mm -hmm. so they can start making their preparations for their duties. Okay. I make a motion that we do that. Okay, I would second that. Um, Mr. Barnes, are you still interested in continuing another term? Yes, I would. Okay. Thank you. That eliminates another question I have to ask them. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, we have a motion. Do we have any discussion? We have a second. Do we have any further discussion on this? All right. Those in favor of the motion to continue the uh, compensation committee and to set it back up with uh, Mr. New, Barnes. new Mr. Barnes included, but Mr. All the uh, board members to be reinstated and back in. in well, there's the, you need some, but yeah, you need two of them. Well, we don't have anybody for that yet, but we not will. yet. But we'll, by next month, I'll have this all figured out, and then we'll I'll present it to you again, and yeah, you can vote on that. Like the right. But just so you can prepare. Yeah. All in favor, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. <coughs> you have some announcements. Were you referring to the back to basis class? Yes. Okay. So Plant Moran suggested that Clerk Viola attend the back to basics class, um, referring to education um, and understanding the audit process. And um, the back to, back to Basics class will be held in Okemos, Michigan. Uh, the first one is on April 4th, 2016, cost is $100. $100. Um, the second session is May 10th, and the cost is $100. All right, and I need approval for this so that I can register. Yeah. So this is the first session, April 4th. And then they were re recommending I go to the second session as well. Mm -hmm. I told her we wouldn't need that one because she thought it was in June. It's actually in May. Mm -hmm. And I need approval so that I can register <laughs> these classes. And you did verify that there was that much money in the budget for schooling for you for that, or no? I can get back with you on that. Oh, right. Right there. Is it? Yeah. With the education on my own. I put this together right before the meeting because I've been busy with the elections. All we have is 200. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she wasn't kidding. I wasn't kidding. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. You're blowing your whole budget with that. Thank you very much. I make a motion okay. that we uh, let her go to the meeting since uh, she has it in her budget anyway. We have a second? Second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to send. Angie to school I didn't say on April 4th and May 10th, 2016. 
2016 at a cost of $200. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, roll aye. call. Sorry. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Okay, Patty? Yes. Matt? Yes. Mary Agnes? Yes. Ken? Yes. Angie? Yes. Okay, all in favor. Let's go. All right. What's that? <laughs> I said road trip. <laughs> road trip. All right. Is there any other announcements? Well, I have the letter of, um, that I submitted to you in regards to um, the uh, compensation for the amount of hours. Oh, yeah. yes. We had an enormous amount of time involved <clears throat> in getting ready for this election. Now, I know that that's going to be reimbursed by the federal government because it was their idea. However, we have three more uh, scheduled elections that we're going to have this year. And, of course, we're not budgeted for that either. One, I think, or two we are, I guess, August and, are we, we're supposed to be August and, and November, but we'll have to double check that to make sure. Uh, I'm sorry? May, August, and November. May also? Three more, okay. Is the May the school? school. It's East okay. District. And then that's reimbursed directly to us too, so we're okay with that one. It's just the, the last two. Um, she'd like to submit a request to be compensated for the extra hours that she's putting in preparing and running the presidential primary election. Working that election on top of her statutory duties has caused the clerk to work a lot of extra hours, and she's documented those for me. After speaking to MTA about this, uh, we were advised that the clerk uh, speak to me. She asked that she speak to me about her concern and asked for a compensation on that. Um, he stated that he had several other phone calls a day from clerks all over Michigan with that same concern, because they're all asking the same question. He said that since there were four scheduled elections this year, it would put a lot of extra work on the clerk and the township board should consider comp compensating the clerk for this. But she, the MTA said it was perfectly allowed. However, it's gotta be board that approve it if that's what you wanna do. Um, Here's the hours. She kind of give us the. <coughs> I didn't make copies of everything. No, I was trying to find my okay. yeah, so. Here's this. No, it's the the form, the chart of all the numbers. That's what I'm looking for. This is stuff. There it is. She did a timesheet for us, showing the <coughs> the basic regular day. And then the total hours over and above the normal, which would be this column here. She's worked over 72 hours more than the 104 that she's compensated for. And then we would also have to know what you, how much you want to compensate her for if you, in, in fact, decide that that's something that you want to do. I move we table this till the next meeting, to the next meeting, so everybody can get a copy of this and try okay, to we can do kind, that. Of, kind of dissect it. Do we have a we'll motion to the table that till next meeting? Well, I'll um, he's asking for some explanation of what this means, the red numbers mean, and everything. Did you want me to? Yeah, go ahead. I, ju I just saw it so for the okay. first time, so that way we can. Well, okay, I have dissect. been busy with the election. So I, I understand. That's the reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the hours I've worked for um, the election, um, starting on February 1st, I've documented every single day and all the hours I've put towards the election. It's part of my statutory duties to do the election. <coughs> However, um, the total hours I've worked are 104 hours total um, from February 1st till yesterday. And then this column is the total hours worked after normal working hours, which equals 72 hours um, above what my normal working hours are and the total hours of compensation I'm seeking are only the hours above the working hours, all right, which are 72 hours. And the red, I'm sorry, the red signify the weekend days that I came in. So okay, that's those great. are, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to make copies for everyone? Yeah, I can certainly make copies. And what we'll do is we'll ask you to put this together yeah. in a package. We'll mm -hmm. put it back on the agenda next month if that's okay with everybody and we'll discuss it. Let's see what you want to do. Okay. You actually have it food right out to a dollar a month besides an hourly amount? We haven't yet, well, no. No, that's what I'm saying. Can she? Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Do we want that in the form of a motion or not? Table there, I guess. 
Yeah. Yeah. Motion to table. Uh, did we get a second? I did. Oh, okay. We have a second on the tabling this till next month, and you prepared the documents so that they have copies. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none. Motion. All right. We have public comments now. Can we put Mr. Oh. He kind of started, Barb, so I know this. Thanks. Good Go evening. Ahead, um, first of all, not to, I just want to get an understanding of what you meant earlier, referring to your statement earlier. If, if I show up at these meetings, I think I've informed you, Mary, why I haven't been here the last three months. And it was due to, for people that are not here, it was due to family issues. All right. I don't have to be at these meetings. I come. I got to be to work at midnight, which is fine. I don't mind coming to the meetings to inform the people that can't make it to my meetings. All right. That's why I show up. And the only reason I, I said that can I have it on the agenda was to address the people earlier in the meetings instead of being late right now, uh, having it towards the end of the meeting. That's why I got up and addressed you earlier. Now, if you'd like to elaborate on your statement to clarify what you meant. Well, I wasn't being facetious. I didn't realize that, it, that I don't recall you telling me why you weren't at the meetings, but I, didn't, I know that you don't have to be here because I used to do your job. Right. But I came to every meeting because lots of times there was questions that they had well, that they wanted to talk about. I don't to want to make a big, big deal about it. I just want to address it because maybe I misunderstood you or well, took I, it the wrong way of but, what yeah, you I said. Because I, didn't, I wouldn't hurt your feelings for the world. Okay. Well, I did address it in your office in January when I was going through it. I came in, I sat down and told you why I wasn't at the meetings because I had family issues. Uh, you might not have met, you had a lot of stuff going on. So, well, you know. In honesty, I didn't. I don't recall that, but okay. go ahead. It's, That's it's fine. Not, not a big deal. Go That's ahead. fine. Okay. We got that straight. We're on the same page. So um, I'm here to uh, address what's going on with the Parks and Rec. I'm Tony Spadafore from the Parks and Rec. Um, we didn't have a lot of stuff going on over the winter months, so probably it wasn't a really big deal. I wasn't here anyway. So, <laughs> I mean, um, I'm, I'm back. Uh, to address the board and keep them informed on what's going on with the Parks and Rec. All right. Um, like I said, uh, I want to inform the people that don't come to the meetings that are at home and can't make it. So I, I, I think it's a, a plus that I come and inform the people that can't make it. So here's what's going on. Um, do you, do you re, uh, recall me talking to you about the electrical out in the park and putting it on the five-year plan? Okay, we got that straight. My board members, I had a meeting Tuesday and they wanted me to ask you that if that was gonna be added to the five-year plan, which you said you would do. Second, um, the uh, last three years I was informed that Parks and Rec had no money in the budget. Um, are, is Kenny or Matt, are you aware that we were supposed to be charging for those water tanks out there, $500 a year, it was supposed to go to the parks and rec. And if you were, did you know where the money went? Well, you don't have an answer, you don't know, or? There, were, there was no money that came in because the last time it was invoiced was when I was here as deputy clerk in 2012. And the first thing I did was check it because you said you didn't have any money and that's one of the sources. So I made out the invoice and sent it and it's, it's come in. But we, we billed them for three years. Right. Well, so I'm, not, I'm not accusing bucks. you that you knew or anything like I that. I, I just, don't know if these gentlemen I, even knew about Right. About no, that. I'm not accusing them. I just wondered if they had knew about that we were supposed to be charging for those water towers and the money was supposed to go to Parks and Rec. Now, you said you built them. Um, did you put it in Parks and Rec or did you receive the payment? The check came in, did it, County? $1,900 is the amount, I think I remember. $1,900 and some change. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure it went. It was yeah, I'm pretty sure that it, it's, it's in as a, as a revenue to Parks and Rec. Okay, so it was billed and, and, it, and it's supposed to be going into Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you're better at reading than you know. You want me to look at the other one? I don't see it listed there. That's one I'm looking at. Page 21. Don't tell me it ended up in the general fund again. No. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. You guys, we'll, 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 we'll move on, and then and you can find it, and then let me know what's going on, what, you know, with that money's um, and where it went, uh, just to make sure it went in the right uh, account where it was supposed to go. Um, second of all, do you, I'm sure you haven't done the budget yet, and I heard, do you have any figure what's in the Parks and Rec at this time? It's around 24000 wasn't it, Matt? Isn't that what we, I think that's what I turned into the, to the state, to the okay. account when they asked for, when they were sending us our millage down. Right. That's what they were, that's what we come up with as far as what the, was indicated on the audit report that was 531. That was coming from the county. Make first 331. So, that was coming from correct. the county. So you're saying 24,000? It's a combination of that that amount. Correct. A combination of 24,000 and what? That's the total amount. The, everything that's accumulated in. Yeah, everything okay. that's there and what's coming down from the county. The county okay. was like 14,600. Now that money, that my, no. the reason for my question is, is that money stays in Parks and Rec. That money doesn't come out of Parks and Rec if the township needs it for anything else like it did in the past. It stays in Parks and Rec, correct? As far as I know, I didn't know that they were borrowing from Parks and Rec. Yeah, well, that's why they kept telling me I had no money in, in Parks and Rec because everything went to the general fund, which um, everything you got on your taxes that are, are going for Parks and Rec on your millage was supposed to go in Parks and Rec and stay in Parks and Rec, and I never had no, no money in Parks and Rec. I don't know if that's the way we do it now. I don't know what they were doing before. Right. Right. That you get from St. Clair. That, that's what I was. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. Right. Okay. All right. So, so that gives me a, a pretty good of idea of what I have to. Is there any way I can get a, a, a statement on that for my treasurer to track? The money that what we spend in Parks and Rec this year, and subtract that. Anything uh, that you want to spend for Parks and Rec, you have to give us a budget. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna do an Easter egg event, you have to give us a, a, a line item of everything that you're spending or proposing to, to spend on prizes and, and food and all that stuff, so that we know how much you're asking for. Well, when you give him run the budget for your budget workshop. You give them the parts and rack or a copy of it, and he can fill it out, and then you would approve it. Well, well basically, well, I, yeah, it basically is what I'm asking for. So my treasurer can contract anything that we can spend in parks and rec, and then if uh, he can get with the treasurer or the clerk, if if the township spends anything else out of that budget, so we get so more or less what what cl the clerk and the treasurer is doing to make sure their balances. Uh, check and balance. Well, Tony, what you have to give us is a rough estimate as what you're going to spend on events. If it's $500 or if it's 750 In the past, here's what I did. I usually came up here and addressed the board of what I needed. Say I need $1,000 for trunk or treat. I usually came up here and addressed the board or put it on the agenda, and then the board approved it or disapproved it. Is that is that fair enough, if that's good enough? Well, if that's the way you want to do it, piecemeal like that. But if you want to project what you want to spend for the entire year, you have other events. You have a... Uh, township picnic you have a uh, well right now to have be have honest with you we're only concentrating on um, the picnic in the park and the uh, trunk or treat because well, I didn't I didn't know exactly what was in the budget okay till right now I heard 24 I heard 9 I heard 18 I heard you know so I didn't really know till I got up here and asked you well it's a combination of, of 
what we got from the county. It's our millage that's collected. Right, I understand now. And it's there just, was a balance, too. Right. And that's, that's what it was. Well, my, my all I'm asking is for a statement of the balance so we can track what we spend, too. I know I have to do those other things and, and present it to the board so they can approve it. I know that. I was just trying to keep an extra, you know, balance of the uh, copy of the balance Is for the parks and rec. I'm sorry. Is any bond come out of that? There's a percentage that does. Yes. When they when they did the at least when I did the the bid proposals for for lawn cutting, we separated the township from the sewer stations because the sewer takes care of that. Township uh, buildings and grounds fund takes care of this, and the park is on its own. Does that include parks and rec maintenance? So, like is there a budget going to be for the maintenance too? Well, that's what you have to tell me. I mean, you, you can't just no. That's what you have to tell me. Well, <laughs> what, if you've what got twenty four thousand in the in that account, that doesn't mean you're going to blow it all this year because next year there won't be any. You, know, you you've got to you've got to tell me what you want to project. Is there? I mean, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in there. If we can't get some of it done by volunteers, we'd have to pay for it. You have to project that to me what you want to do. Well, that's going to be part of. Uh, a lot of that's going to be going to bringing the park up to standards before it opens. Um, there's some stuff that has to be done to the park, which I'm projecting to give you a rough idea, three to five thousand dollars out of that twenty-four thousand. So, and that and that consists of mulch. There's needs a swing. There's chains for the tower that needs to be put on there. There's uh, sandbox equipment that needs to be fixed, and uh, there's. Uh, also, I don't know if this falls under the maintenance part, but the, the weed control out there needs to be assessed twice a year. The last two years, it wasn't assessed. The, grew, the weeds grew ass high, all right? You could walk through there, and, and, and it's not a joke. It, it got bad last year because the, there wasn't, the weed control was, uh, they quit doing it. So. Um, Who's they? Do you know who did it? The board. The board, you know, I mean, quit. Who, who yeah, Tim's landscaping. Okay. So they, they told him that it wasn't in the budget, so he quit spraying for weeds, and it got bad. So I'm looking for you know not to you know have that happen again. Okay. So uh, basically, um, that's what I'm looking for right now. Is the first thing is going to be bringing the park up to standards. I'll have to get with you, and what you think we can come up with, and what we can save as far as our volunteers, and what we what we might have to spend. So I'll get with you on a day that I have off early. I'll come in here, we'll sit down, and we'll hash it out. Please All right. Call and make an appointment. All right. Sure I'll do that, and then uh, we'll we'll address that, and then we'll uh, go in as far as the the board members right now. As far as we're looking at, is a picnic in in the trunk or treat right now. Okay. If we have other money, they were waiting to see what we had. So I know you got to do the budget. And also, is the budget going to be done on a Saturday? I heard it was going to be done on a Saturday so people could attend. Uh, no, we have to advertise it. To, uh, I think it's 10 days in advance. Right. No, I don't mean this Saturday. I mean whenever you decide to have it. Well, we, we've got we to get it rolling so that it can be approved by the 31st. Okay. So, But you, you're not sure if you're going to have it on a Saturday? No, where I don't think it'll be on a Saturday. You guys don't want to give up your Saturday, do you? No. What do you mean you don't want to give it up? <laughs> no, it seems like we're here eight days a week now. No. I know I am. <laughs> no, I'm just that. kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. You can't take me seriously. Are we, are we all, all set? Right. We're all set. Good. Have a chair, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we'll. Barbara. When I get good and ready. You're ready. <laughs> Barbara. Best meeting so far since you guys have been appointed or elected into your positions. Last couple were kind of scary. A little too much excitement for me too. Right. Thanks. But looking at it with the communication, mm -hmm. it was working out very well tonight. I want to apologize for my outburst from my seat because that's uncalled for. We're not looking back, we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ken, for checking me on that. Okay, so what just want to say. Outburst? Did I miss that? Yeah, I said something not so nice about the last board. Oh. So, you know, they're not here anymore, so we're moving forward. So, again, I wanted to apologize to everybody here. Yeah. Okay, so nice job tonight. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your support. Anyone else have anything to say? Oh, yeah.
<laughs> All right, I thought I'd give you a few interesting facts about Cotterville since I'm on the Historical Society. Sure. And uh, Cotterville, pronounced Cotrellville. Um, it was the George Cottrell, one of the first settlers in the River District area, arrived from Detroit in 1781 and settled on a parcel of land granted to him as a token of friendship by the Indians. This property was located on the river south of present-day Marine City, where he and his wife, Cecilia Cottrell, farmed and operated a training post. They raised 12 children at this location from whom all local Cottrell descendants have originated. When the partition of our section of Michigan was made in 1787, there was only one township called Cotterville, which included the present-day townships of China, Cotterville, China, Casco, East China, and Ira. In the heart of this township was the city of Newport, later called Marine City. Uh, a legislative act establishing the first township in Michigan uh, divided several counties in this territory and its townships and other purposes. Section three stated that all that part of the county of St. Clair contained the survey townships and fractional parts of townships numbered three in ranges 15, 16, 17, east of Principal Meridian, be a township by the name of Cotterville, and the first township meeting be held at Cottrell's Tavern in said township, approved April 12, 1827, Lewis Cass, the governor. Uh, another fact is that we have six unincorporated communities in Cotterville, Avalon Beach, Broadbridge Station, Cherry Beach, Martindale Beach, Roberts Landing, and Starville. The United States Census Bureau total area is 22.4 square miles, 21.2 are, are land, and 1.2 square miles, 5.27% uh, is water. Our population in 2010 was 3,559, and that was 2.18% of the St. Clair County population. In 2015, we had 3,214, only 2.0% of the St. Clair County population. And I just want to add that we are Cottrellville Township in honor of the Cottrell family. Um, Harrison Township doesn't call them Harry Township. General Motors doesn't call them Generous Motors. I worked at Bon Secura all my life, and we used to joke about calling it, you know, on the side, Bone Suckers. But it's Bon Secura. And I just think as um, for integrity of our township and the Cottrell family and being a member of the Historical Society, we have to remember to you know, call our township Cottrellville, answer our phones Cottrellville Township, because we are not a hick township. And if we keep doing that, um, our new directory from the county had Cottrellville, and then you look at the address, and then they put Cotterville. It's because we have to be very careful about how we pronounce our township, because everybody's going to be calling us Cotterville. And, you know, just for our integrity, I think that we need to honor the Cottrell family, the Cottrell family. So, just a little interesting Can fact. I second that? You certainly may. Yes, bothered me for a long time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm asking for a phone downstairs. When I came in this morning, the computers were all down. And when you go downstairs and you have to run back up to talk on the phone to go back down there to find out what button to push or what cord to pull and then come back up and say I can find SMS but which plug and back down. I got them back up but I don't like running up and down the stairs. We used to have a phone down there and there was a jack down there so you could talk on the phone when the computers went out. We don't now. Can we get it back? You'll have to ask your clerk, and she'll propose it to us. <laughs> Last time I fixed it, I used my cell phone, <laughs> and I kept it down there while I was talking to them, fixing the machine. So, but well, sometimes the cell phones don't work down there. If they if they, they have go a, out, a jack that works, we'll we'll see if we can. Yeah, find because there was one on the back wall, and we had a phone right right next to all those towers. Yeah. I made three trips. 
Did it get wet in the floor? Thank you, hi. <laughs> no. Thank you so much for Thank your you service. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh. oh. I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight and everything that you do and everything that you have to think about and go over. It's very involved. Mm -hmm. And I'm very thankful that you are there and that you do this. And um, and even this man, was his name Tony? Yes. I really appreciated, you know, everything you had to say and that you're involved. And, and this man, Mr. Barnes, everybody's so involved. And I really appreciate that. Would you like a part-time job? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. We've got committees we could use people for. <laughs> Goodwill ambassador. <laughs> Goodwill ambassador. Anyone else? Oh, sure, go ahead. I have just two things that I wanted to bring up. Um, last month there was some talk and concern over um, a citizen's tax bill, that there was an issue. What is that? I don't know. Oh, oh. Um, concern about a tax bill. Um, and there was an error made on, on the citizen's tax bill. Um, and with some help, we in phone calls, we think we've got it rectified. And uh, we had, you know, I, I personally called the citizen to make sure, it, you know, that we were good with what was done. And um, haven't heard anything back, so I'm kind of hoping that that worked out. But I just wanted to bring that point up. And if anybody at any time has any concerns, I hope that you feel that you can come to any one of us and. Don't be afraid that we're going to, you know, send you on your way. We'll try to help you out. And if one of us doesn't know, we can ask the other or make some phone calls to get an answer for you to try to, to figure out what the, you know, the problem and to the answer, or the answer to the problem, excuse me. Um, the other thing is once a year we have to settle with the county our figures from the treasurer's office. And I'm happy to guys. say that we are balanced within pennies to their figure. Yeah. So I'm very happy. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Very good for a first first yeah. time treasurer. That was <laughs> wonderful. I was like, I was thrilled. Oh, I, I bet. I was thrilled. Congratulations. So, anyone yeah. else have anything to say? Yes, I want to say that Angie did a terrific job. On that election, yes, she did. Oh, yeah. It was fun. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I think we do have the right people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> this is not good news, but Senator says that one of the townships next to us is cutting their clerk and their treasurer to less than twenty thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. and they were making like a couple thousand more than that. Oh, that's too bad. So I was really surprised. Yeah. Any benefits they had? Oh, we don't have any here. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. That's too bad. Mm -hmm. They right. must not have a compensation committee. <laughs> <laughs> like we do. Bank, they huh. bank. Okay. And they got the most sloppiest, dirtiest driver. I pulled in there. <laughs> And I looked around at the mud I had to walk through today because I was there yesterday. And I thought about our beautiful traffic way here. Well, where is the road? They have all this money, but they got this walking mud. Mm -hmm. All right, well, then I guess we motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried.